books. The voting will begin 6 o'clock tonight, all the way to Monday morning at WFAN.com. You can see all their performances on WFAN.com. Our judges are in place as we welcome in uh, Matthew Shortis. Matthew joins us now. Welcome, Matthew. Matthew from Baldwin, uh, New York. And uh, from Hofstra. Yes. And has some experience in the biz, too, man. A little bit. So, yep. uh, welcome. Thank you. All right. What made you jump into this? Uh, I just felt like it was time. I mean, I was graduating Hofstra the first year of Fantasy Phenom, and, and for some reason I just wasn't inclined to do it. And I was listening to FAN uh, one day, and they, I heard the promo for Fantasy Phenom 4, and something inside of me was like, give it a whirl. And, and I'm, I'm really glad I did, obviously. All right. If you win, you not only get the gig, you also get a Hyundai for the year. So tell the folks about Hyundai, and then we'll get you to your caller. Here's a fact. Lester Glenn Hyundai and Tom's River sells more Hyundais in New Jersey than any other dealer. How do they do it? Well, it starts with the Lester Glenn experience of being treated right from the moment you come in. But equally important is the price. Right now at Lester Glenn Hyundai, get 6000 over Kelly Blue Book for... Uh, for your trade or grand, six grand cash back when you buy a new 2013 Hyundai Sonata or Elantra. And get America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty and Hyundai Assurance. Lesser Glen Hyundai, Route 37, Toms River, New Jersey. It's the way car buying should be. All right, Matthew Shortis is with us. So is uh, Jeff on the Jersey Shore where we are, and that's your caller, Jeff on the Jersey Shore. Take it away. All right, Jeff on the Shore, you're on WFN. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? I'll tell you, I just left there, uh, and I said to the uh, screener, to the call, that I knew Kim was pretty, but she's much, much prettier in person. Um, oh, but Kim with that, that. the question, with this controversy lately um, that's been coming down out of the Major League Baseball offices, do you really think the commission are, uh, and his staff has been fair in the way they've been handling this situation, specifically with the AUR? I, I think they have. The only problem I really have with it is all the stuff getting out in the media from, from really both sides. I mean, what Alex Rodriguez and his lawyers have done a really good job of is muddling the waters and taking attention away from what the real issue is, which is the fact that Alex Rodriguez was involved in this whole biogenesis stuff. Now, you can debate how long a suspension he should have gotten, and we really don't know all the facts. Until Major League Baseball comes out with the facts, shows us what exactly they have on A-Rod more so than any of the other 13, 14 guys involved in the biogenesis stuff. It, it's hard to say that Major League Baseball has been completely fair to Alex Rodriguez, but at the same time, he's brought some of this on himself. All right, thank you for the call. Thank you, Matthew. Matthew has one-year-old twin sons. Right okay. over there. Right, right over there. There you go. Mm. Now, Jack and James, as someone who has twins himself, uh, Jack and Emily, who are now eight, uh, you haven't gotten much sleep, huh? Surprisingly, months like four through eight were probably the biggest strain on my marriage ever. Right. And then when they started Who sleeping the through night the night shift, um, my wife was a trooper all the way through. All, all the time. All the way through. Um, did, did they eat at the same time? No, they never get that lucky, right? They, they never eat at the same time. That's the thing. One they, eats every two hours, and they never eat at the same time, so they're always they, eating. I don't think they stopped eating. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, uh, one month nine, when they started to sleep through the night, it was uh, refreshing. It was the best marriage counseling I could have asked for. And from nine until they're 17 months now, it's 6.30 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. They sleep in 12 hours? Less. Yes. Oh, both of them? Both of them. Man, you are lucky. I mean, <laughs> both of them sleep in 12 hours apiece? Yeah. Tiki knows this, too, man. That is rare. Both of them sleep in 12 hours? Yeah, it is rare. I, mean, I am a twin and a father of twins. That's yeah, right. I, I mean, geez, I mean, that is, that is rare. You know, that, and if you need anything about, you know, sibling rivalries or anything, how would, you like to, how would you like to see two who both become professional athletes That'd be as cool. twins? You I know mean, that? now, how early were you guys pulling at each other's hair? Because it's already started to happen. Separ separate them when they go to school so they have an individual personality. Uh, but always We already see the, the individual individual personalities yeah, that's great. You, you know, know what it, you know what you should I, do with all the booing you that? should play the david cern role he just <laughs> he just lives in it you know he welcomes oh, it i don't mind it you know <laughs> i've been on both sides of it yeah he's he's been cheered plenty of times too <laughs> I, that, that is for sure you know i can't imagine now having a boy girl it's much easier having twin boys i would think is extremely competitive the boy girls a little easier of course you know they're boy and girl but you guys with the twin boys it's going to be interesting you might be right 
I, I can't tell yet, it's too early, because they're only 17 months old. So when they're four, we might see it. I'm seeing the competitiveness a little bit, but I've got nothing to you compare it to. Same room? Same room. Same room, okay. It's gonna be interesting to see. All right, two minutes, here we go. All right, another day and another shot fired in the ongoing saga between the New York Yankees front office and Alex Rodriguez. The latest, latest story coming out yesterday was that the Yankees would pretty much welcome Alex Rodriguez filing a lawsuit against them because they feel they have the goods. They feel that they can prove that Alex Rodriguez's hip injuries are a direct result of him taking steroids and PED. And through all this, it's really been very remarkable how well Alex Rodriguez has played with all this stuff circling around. I mean, the 200. 11 game suspension hanging over his head, accusations flying around between his lawyers, Major League Baseball, and the New York Yankees. I think it's pretty fair to say that he has surpassed any on-field expectations that anybody could have had for him coming off not one but two major hip surgeries. The Yankees are 12 and 6 with him in the lineup. He's bolstered an offense that was really inept before he got there, even with Cano and Soriano in the lineup. And the defense has been pretty good as well. I mean, he made a nice double play yesterday, which probably saved the game for the Yankees and led to that sweep. And I, I think the reason that he's been able to, to plow through this has been a really big change in his, his mental state. He is now embracing being baseball's number one villain. I mean, you think about it, before this year, before all this biogenesis stuff, what was one of the biggest knocks on Alex Rodriguez? He cares too much about what everybody else thinks. He, he wants to please everybody. He knows there is no way that's happening. He knows every time he takes the field, he is the most hated, the least liked player in Major League Baseball, whether it's from the fans, whether it's from opponents. I mean, even his own boss, Brian Cashman, has said that he is not comfortable talking to Alex Rodriguez anymore. That's astounding coming from your boss. A couple of years ago, LeBron James bolted Cleveland to go to Miami. He went from the NBA's golden child to persona non grata in basketball, and he embraced the heck out of it. It was almost like a pro wrestling bad guy. He started interacting with the fans. He was riding the referees more. He started flopping, and in some sense, it almost gave him a little bit pressure off. Aaron's doing the same thing. We saw it in Trenton. We saw it in Fenway. And ironically, the team that might, most might benefit from this, at least on the field, is the Yankees with the new Aaron, the bad guy, instead of Alex Rodriguez, the diva. All right, Tiki, what do you think? Well, you're already on my positive side because you have twins. The twins run in the family. Also, my grandmother was a twin. Wow, all over the place. Uh, here's the thing. I, I was nervous at first because I thought you were just reporting the news about Alex Rodriguez and the Yankees organization. But then you started to get into an opinion. Why did you not take a stronger stance on the relationship with the Yankees and Alex Rodriguez? Because the point that I was really trying to uh, portray was the fact that because Alex has taken on this persona, he's been able to play well. I, I wasn't really, didn't want to directly go into the dynamics of the relationship between him and Cashman, more the, the inner workings of how he's used this to fuel his recent hot streak. Good answer. Kim, go ahead. I thought, that, I thought that was unique, and I thought it was provocative, and it wasn't something I'd thought about, but I think you're right. I think for Alex to finally leave that daily, momentary, you know, minute-by-minute minute obsession he had of being liked, and, and to sort of embrace who he is now and accept that, that this is the way he's perceived and he's going to fight it. And by that, I mean right now in your world, in the, in the ways you put it, fight it on the field and fight it with decent play. And like you mentioned, 12 and 6 since he's been back. Yeah. I thought it was provocative, and I don't think you always hear that uh, on radio overall. Uh, Thank you. So I, I thought that was a nice job and a, a good touch, a, a good take. Okay. All right, John. Definitely thought you brought an interesting perspective here. Two things I would say. Number one, it was interesting the way you tied it all together. But to me, I would have liked to have heard a little bit more about the Yankees' initial success with A-Rod being on the field. Maybe it's me just being totally sick and totally <laughs> fed up with dealing any sort of performance-enhancing drugs issue. And I understand, listen, it's been in the news. It's unavoidable from time to time. Sure. But I think we're getting to the point now where it's like the team's playing well, the Yankees are making that push enough of the steroid nonsense already. So I'm getting that feel, and I think you had some really good points. The other one I'd bring up with you as far as a critique, LBJ and LeBron James almost being the bad guy. 
I don't know if I necessarily agree, namely because I think he tried to embrace that bad guy role the first year he was in Miami. Mm -hmm. Failed miserably. They spit the bit. They lost to Dallas in that finals. He came back. He took on a different role, and guess what? They went out there and they won back-to-back. Nonetheless, interesting perspective there. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, Matthew. Very good. Congratulations. Thank uh, you. Good luck. And the voting will start 6 o'clock tonight. Now he can go back to his twins who are right over there. They are cute, too, those guys, Jack and James. So uh, we'll be back. A couple minutes break, and then the Smithereens will rejoin us. We still have one more contestant to go and a lot more to do here at Barre, so stay with us.